Episode 37 of Parenting Autism. We are your hosts, Sandy and Chris Coulter. Hi, honey. Hello. Hey, so this episode, I think we're going to talk a lot about ABA and our personal experience with ABA, because I know that's something that comes up so much in the autism community. In fact, when Bryce was diagnosed and we asked his neurologist, what was our next step? The first thing he said was ABA, 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 and we didn't know what that meant. So for those who don't know what it means, it's applied behavior analysis where they actually set certain goals with Bryce and then measure how he responds, I guess is the best way to say it. Does that sound right to you? Mainly they work on problem behaviors, to put it. Yeah, let's talk layman terms, right? Let's talk mommy, daddy, parent terms. Yeah, they work on problem behaviors, which I have to say when he was two and first diagnosed, it was different behaviors than what we deal with now when he's six and a half. So it's kind of been a progression. Um, But I will say that we've had ABA on and off. So we have not had it consistently since he was diagnosed for insurance and provider reasons and we have seen positive differences when he does have it would you agree with that Mm -hmm. I think so I think it's taught us a lot how to work with him and I think it is something that if someone were to ask me should they do it or not I would say definitely look into it I think it has to do with having the right people and the right team because you have the person who oversees him, who writes his plan, so to speak. BCBA. Yep, yeah, that's the BCBA. I just wasn't going to throw a bunch of acronyms, but yeah. So you have the person who kind of <clears throat> does the interview with us and asks us a ton of questions about him, what he does and doesn't do and sometimes does and all that. And then based on that information, they create a plan and then they assign uh, a tech or two, um, however many they have available and according to your needs, because Bryce has had several different ones. Uh, But anyway, so then they assigned us a tech to work with him, and then the main person, who's the BCBA, uh, who comes in and oversees it, she'll usually come in like once a week and just kind of monitor how everything is going. And that's been our experience, and we've had two different um, BCBAs work with Bryce and we've had several texts, but I think it's good to have different people because Bryce changes and so his needs change and they each come with a different approach. Uh, but the person he has right now, um, she's, she's good with him mm-hmm. and he seems really responsive with her. But what we're dealing with now, I guess we'll talk with the fresh stuff because <laughs> it's fresh in our house and the look on your face is not a happier one today. Defeat. <laughs> you do feel defeated. And you know, when we did said we were going to do this podcast, we said we were going to keep it real, right? I'm not talking about my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole separate thing. Uh, we're talking about <laughs> D-E-F-E-A-T, <laughs> defeat. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I mean, there has been, um, you know, a certain air in the vibe in the air this morning, I guess I should say, and it's been tough. And for whatever reason, Bryce is kind of picking on you a little more, I think. (laughs) (laughs) And when I say picking on you, he's testing your waters a little more than he's testing mine. Um, But like I told you this morning, you know, there's days that I have more patience than you. And there's days that You have more patience than me. Thank God that we can offset that and that Mm -hmm. we're both not depleted on patience in the same day. Mm -hmm. Um, But today I have more patience and Bryce is certainly pecking away at yours today. Mm -hmm. So if people are wondering like, well, what did he do? You know, it's, we can get into a little bit of specifics. Are you cool with that? 
Yeah, I can rattle them off really quickly go since ahead. they're at the forefront of my mind. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> so when uh, when Bryce, when we try to move Bryce along, you know how they get distracted on things. Well, not they. Let's just talk about Bryce. Let's yes. not talk about the well, general yeah, world. Okay. okay? If they uh, relate, if people relate, they relate. If they don't, right. fine. So Bryce. we're moving Bryce along. And you, you give them a little nudge on the shoulder to move forward. And it's, Daddy pushed me. <laughs> that is what he said today. <laughs> Daddy pushed me. And then he perseverates on that. Daddy, you pushed me. And I don't want to say anything because it will just feed it. Hey, bud. Daddy? Here's the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bryce. How can I help you? Do you need help? What's up, bud? <laughs> He's just standing there. What, what do you want? What that? I want two dollars and ninety nine cents. I want count your money. <laughs> count your money. Come here, let me see what you got, buddy. Two dollars and ninety nine cents. So Bryce right. is wanting a new game. You need to count your money. All right, listen, how about you got the game and we'll count it later, okay? <gasps> Go have fun. Go have fun. Close, Close the, the door, door please. please. Or not. I'll get in. I got your new airport. <laughs> you got so, a new airport? He's happy about his awesome. new airport. So. <clears throat> okay. We have two airports on this. Okay, go play your new airport, bud. So we tell him on Sundays if he has enough money that he can get a new game. So he counts his change in his piggy bank. And if he has enough money, then he can get whatever it is that he's wanting to play. And today's is an airplane. A new airport, apparently. New new airport for his airplane game. <clears throat> so as I was saying, uh, he is perseverating on me pushing him and then... If I use a firm tone, that's considered yelling. So he's kind of over-exaggerating emotions. Or maybe he's not in his mind. I don't know what it is. But And then you have, you know, when you're coughing and then he's yelling. And uh, I don't know what he did just a little bit ago where he just let off this scream that... Because you counted backwards on him. Oh, I did. Yeah, so... <laughs> Which you know, he was playing in the kitchen sink, and water was splashing everywhere. And our kitchen is in the middle of construction, so I didn't want water all over the new kitchen cabinet. So I counted down for him to be finished with the kitchen sink, and he said five, four, three, two, one, and then he let off this ear curdling scream that just scrambled my brain and it was everything <laughs> that I could do to ignore that and keep doing what I was doing. So it's, it's just been a, a morning full of tests and, you know, sometimes we get worn out and he's worn me out today <laughs> so far and we're not even, uh, not so even just into the afternoon. <laughs> Oh. Well, I wanted you to share that because I even said to you, are we going to talk about this on the air or off the air? Because we obviously we need to talk about this. You know, I think what is happening is we made this decision last week to start ignoring some of his behaviors that he's been doing to get attention. Mm -hmm. And there have been some behaviors that have been escalating and when I look at them it's truly to get our attention and not even in a bad way it's in weird ways like he will want us to say it's okay and give him comfort or he wants us to deny whatever it is that he's exaggerating and saying that we're doing and he does it to you more than he does to me for whatever mm. reason Yeah, he loves you me. yell more than I'm <laughs> Um, or he, and I think you hit it. It's, we can't say that 
in his mind, he doesn't genuinely think that he's been pushed mm-hmm. or that he genuinely doesn't <laughs> think comical. that it gelled. Next thing you know, he's going to be telling other people, well, Daddy pushed me. And I like, know. Oh, and that's great. the thing. And <laughs> and that is something that's out there. because Daddy yells at me. <laughs> Then we're going to have DFS knocking on our door to see if we mistreat our child. You know, I mean, there's just so many things with this. You know, I, I have to say that one time, I don't know, it was last week or something. No, it was a couple of weeks ago now that that I, I set a firm tone and he said, Daddy yelled. Right. And I explained to him, I said, no, Bryce, Daddy did not yell. Daddy yelled. I said, no, Daddy didn't yell. I said, "Do you want to hear what yelling is?" And he says, "Yes." So I didn't yell at him. I raised my voice to the level of what I would consider yelling, and it melted him. It was like, "Oh, I'm sure it did," and I'm was, glad I wasn't there. It was not good for him. And then because I was trying to remind him of what yelling would sound like you know to where he's not saying oh you're yelling when you're not yelling I, you know and that didn't work at all so i don't recommend that um <laughs> because he's still you know if i just raise my voice up one db it's like i'm yelling and he he just doesn't differentiate from it or he doesn't like the he doesn't like the firm tone maybe he just doesn't like the firm tone i don't know well i think that's it and i'm glad you said you don't recommend that i know i kind of laugh but we don't recommend that because Mm -hmm. we've said we've noticed with bryce and disciplining him over the years he doesn't respond the way that you and i responded when we were children right you know he does not respond in the same things because he doesn't have the same perceptions as you and I share. Mm-hmm. And I think about it, and I can remember if my, especially my dad, I don't remember it with my mom. So, okay, it still sears in my brain. My dad, if he said something to me, and it, my dad was not a yeller or a screamer in the terms of high decibel and loud volume. Mm-hmm. But if he said something that the tone was firm and you knew he was unhappy or disappointed or upset, you know, with mm-hmm. me, if I knew that it felt like he yelled at me and I would use that term in my head, even though he didn't raise a loud voice, mm-hmm. you knew he was yelling at you in the way that he was not happy with you yeah. and correcting you on something. And so I just think that's how Bryce hears. And obviously he has a much more limited language base than we have so he Mm -hmm. only has certain words that he knows that he can say and associate with you're saying something you're not happy with me and you're saying something at me and you know and he is learning emotions right now and you know so maybe that's what they tell him in those pictures is that person's yelling because they look angry you know what else i don't get is He'll ask for more of whatever it is that he doesn't like so he perceives that you pushed him he might say push again push again or or yell again daddy or you know he's always like, really? done that why? and we haven't figured yeah. out why he seeks more of what he doesn't really like but I, what i've noticed that he's been trying to do is get you to react mm-hmm. for sure and that's where the whole when we're saying we're ignoring him We're not ignoring that he's in the room. In fact, we're just ignoring the behavior. Mm -hmm. The behavior that he's wanting us to respond to is what we're ignoring. So sometimes it's just silence. Yeah. And then sometimes I know he's trying to get you to do something. So I will be in a happy little tone. Oh, Bryce, why don't you come over here and do this? Trying to get him redirected in another way. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't, Um, you know, or we wait until he comes back with something that was not the original issue and then we'll respond to him there. Mm -hmm. But like even with my coughing, and if you've listened to any of our podcasts before, you will know that I have a major issue with reflux and my (laughs) coughing, my health and Bryce screams when I cough and this has been going on for years. So it's, it's getting old, but I noticed it had stopped for a while and then it's picked back up, right? So I noticed that 
he's been doing it a lot more lately, like screaming when I'm coughing. And so while I'm just thinking of all these different behaviors that he's doing, like the ones we've just discussed, and then the coughing, I thought, well, what have we been trying to explain it to him more? Like, mommy's okay. Mommy's not sick. Mommy's not going to the hospital. You know, all these reassuring words that we're giving him every time he screams when I cough, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, maybe that's what he's trying to get from us is more of those kind of words, you know, because he does like to be reassured, like, it's okay, it's okay, you know, because he'll reassure himself if we don't. So yeah. I know he likes to hear it. Right. So I've just been ignoring him, and I ask you to ignore him as well, which I know is hard. Trust me. It's like goes against our natural grain mm-hmm. for sure. sure it's does. almost like you have to go the opposite of what you would normally do yeah. with him to be effective. It's like. It really is. I don't know. I almost had to leave and take a walk around the block. And and I encourage you to do that. I've even said that. If you need to leave, leave. So focused on me and trying to get me to say things or Mm -hmm. respond to him. I Mm -hmm. almost had to like go out the front door, walk around the block and then come back, reset. And maybe he's on to something else. And I always encourage you if you need Mm -hmm. to do that, do that because it's true. It's better to leave the space, you know? Yeah. So I have noticed, though, this past week when I stopped saying anything when he was screaming after my cough, he wasn't doing it as often. And even yesterday when I was with his ABA tech and I was coughing and she's like, he's not doing anything. And I'm like, I know, because I've ignored him all week with that. (laughs) You know, I've ignored that behavior. I should say that. I haven't ignored him all week. Uh, I've ignored that behavior all week. Right. Right. So it's like I've noticed now it's not 100 percent of the time that he will scream when I cough. Now it's rarely. And now today it has flipped to he will cough when I cough. So mm-hmm. he's wanting me to react to, to that. that. <laughs> so I'm not. So just a few minutes ago before we did this, I was getting him all set with the laundry because, you know, he loves to watch a good load wash. And so. I coughed and then he coughed and I didn't say anything. And then he looked at me. He goes, we both coughed. (laughs) And I said, yes, we did. And that's all I said. And then that was all that it was. In my mind, I'm thinking, I will take him giving me a sympathy cough any day of the week over an ear piercing scream. But he just wanted that. And I feel like we're making progress. That's what I'm saying. As painful as this week has been with some of this, and it has been at moments. I mean, seriously, it's tough when he's trying to get you Mm -hmm. to say what he wants you to say. It is, is, and he's not meaning to. That's... (laughs) He is, but he's not. He's not meaning to upset you, but he is meaning to get you to say what he wants you to say. It's his wiring, and it's crazy. That's right. But it's true. It is his wiring. It's an overwhelming urge for him to do that, and he can't help himself. And that's where I know, and my compassion has to kick in for that. Mm -hmm. But it's like you said, if you... Especially it's whoever he's going at that the patients mm-hmm. are going to wear out faster. <laughs> <laughs> and you won the prize today. But, you know, when it does happen, it is better to separate. It mm-hmm. is, you know, whether you're in a place where you can go take a walk or, um, you know, he won't follow us to the bathroom. So you can go in there and, and yeah. just escape for a few minutes. That's just what we have to do. But I, I there's no doubt that. There's been a lot of escalating of him trying to do certain things and get us to respond. Mm -hmm. And I know last week we had Christine on, which was great. Um, And then she was we were talking a little bit about um, Bryce with the clapping and the loud noises Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, and I just I appreciate everything that she has to say. and, And Lord knows she's experienced this a lot longer than we have. But I also want to just put this out there for people listening to us. Always still go with your instinct, Mm -hmm. your mama and your papa instincts, because you know your child. And if you're looking in their eyes and you really believe it's something that is autism related or causing them pain or discomfort, you know, you have to make that judgment call with how you handle those things. Um, But there's no doubt that like what we're describing now 
those things can, I think they even call it in the field, extinguishing behaviors, you know, that we're trying to extinguish these re- yeah. things that he's doing because it really is extinction, just extinction, right? Mm-hmm. They, they really are, or he really is just trying to get us to respond. I don't know what his feedback is from that. I don't, yeah. It's not like we don't give him attention because he gets our attention yeah. a lot the, in a beautiful the, way. The extinction behavior, what that means is that it gets worse before it, it gets better, it right? It gets better. Yeah. And I think that's what we are, are experiencing right now. Like that's why it was escalating this week, but mm-hmm. it was time to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're almost there. I can see it. And that's why I want to encourage you. Yes. Seriously, I feel like we're almost there, but the moment that we cave it's like going back to point ground yes. zero and we have to start yes. all over again and that's why we have to be there for each other and say mm, ignore okay yes. so classic example from earlier this week this was an unintentional button that we pressed for bryce but at bedtime you know he likes to turn the light off before we all go to sleep and you know sometimes we don't think about what his routine is you know he has it down but quite honestly sometimes we just do things because it's natural and we do it so you came in and you naturally turn the light off because we're all going to bed right because bryce was doing something else oh my lord you would have thought that the end of the world the end of the world was happening so he starts crying and goes back and then you stopped him and you're like no it was daddy's turn i turned off the light tonight you can do it tomorrow he Like, I haven't seen him have a meltdown like that. or And when I say meltdown, I mean like a full-on screaming episode Mm -hmm. for quite a while. But there it went. And he was screaming at the top of his lungs, your name, and for you to turn it back on. Because Mm -hmm. you had to undo what you did. So he couldn't just go turn it back on. No, you would have to go turn it back on so so that he could turn it off. You know, it's like one of those things. Well, once he started that scream, it's over. I mean, we have to see this all the way through. There's Mm -hmm. no way you can touch that light or he can touch that light at this point, right? It's over. It's over. So then I know, okay, I don't know if this is going to be 20 minutes or two hours, but game is on. (laughs) It is late. Oh, my Lord, help us through this Jesus. Okay. So you go... I mean, we reassured him the words, and you only do it briefly, you know, because you can't keep saying it and saying it and right, saying it. because that's what he wants. Exactly. So we explained it, and we said, we're going to bed. Everybody's going to bed, and we'll see you in the morning. Well, obviously, he's still going, but you laid in bed, mm-hmm. and I laid in bed, and it was dark, so he's screaming your name <laughs> for several minutes, <laughs> and then when you were non-responsive, I heard mommy. <laughs> so then he starts screaming my name and comes over and starts begging me to go turn the light on. So I'm ignoring it. And then he climbs up in the bed and he starts kissing all over me, <laughs> like trying to warm me up. And then he goes, excuse me, excuse me, because that's what he will say now. And we normally say what yeah. if he says, excuse me. So he's going, excuse me, excuse me. And he takes his hands to my mouth and starts moving my lips up and down saying, what, what? <laughs> to speak for me and i'm trying so hard not to laugh at this because it was quite funny and so he's like and he's not screaming at this point he's just like getting desperate and trying to figure out how he can can get somebody to turn this light back on for him so that he can in turn turn it off so I was ignoring his behavior and I wasn't saying anything. And I had already said, Bryce, mommy is going to sleep. I yeah. am done. I am going to sleep. So that's going on. And then all of a sudden he says, because he was crying, so his nose was runny. And then he says, mommy, get a tissue. All right. So in my mind, with all my ABA classic mm-hmm. studying, <laughs> if he asks for something appropriate, you respond, yes. It's only when he asks for something that's inappropriate that you ignore that behavior. So I'm like, yes, we've moved on. No. Yes. I, and you, Bumble, you just got played. Yep, right? You just got played. And so I turn over and I said, oh, you want a tissue? And I saw his face. So there must have been light on in the bathroom because I could see his face. 
and he was so excited and so he hops up and he <laughs> runs over to the light switch expecting me to go and I wasn't out of the bed yet because yeah. I had just turned over and I saw that and I'm like Oh, you don't need a tissue. Okay, if you need one, they're in the bathroom and you can get them yourself. <laughs> I'm going back to sleep and I turned back over. So that ended that. And he came back in and he's trying to kiss all over me again. And then it stopped. He just kind of laid there in the bed and you left. Oh, that's right. You I removed to, yourself yeah, from the situation, I which was good. <laughs> <laughs> you were done. You left me. Thank you. So um, so then at that point, I said, he calmed. So when it was calm for a few, and I have no idea how long this was going on, but it was a long time. I said, would you, I said, do you want to go sleep in your Thomas bed? Bear misses you because he sleeps with Bear. Yeah. And he says, I can't. Daddy's not here. So I'm like, well. Daddy, I'm not sure that daddy's coming back. So, you know, you should go sleep. And he was exhausted. You know, he was exhausted. And within. That's probably part of the issue. It is. And then within a minute or two, he was asleep. And then I moved him on over to his bed and then you were able to come back. But, you know, that's what we're dealing with right now. And you know what is. And people can probably relate that sometimes you don't know something's a routine until you do something different and right. then your eyes are opened. Oh, that was a routine and that was his routine. And we just did something that was out of his routine. So like Bryce could have other routines that we don't even know about that we're just doing out of habit, you know, and it's really not good for them to get into these routines because. Well, yes. And I have thoughts on that because I agree we don't want them to get into a routine that is going to affect everyone. You know what right. I mean? Like we all have routine. I have routines. Or you have friends routines, or family. Or things you know. that are comforting, yeah. you know, and I like to do things a certain way. Listen, if he has a routine where he goes into the shower and washes yeah. himself and then turns the shower off, that's a great routine. I know. So, <laughs> you know, like we're not saying routines are bad in general, but with Bryce, he adds steps to his routine. So if we let him keep adding things to the bedtime routine, <laughs> yes. we could be up to 27 things that must go in an exact order before he before goes we know bed. it yeah mm. i mean really he like will add little things so for us when we can identify that it would trigger that kind of reaction then we know okay we we have to mix it up mm-hmm. so even though you unintentionally flip the trigger mm-hmm. um it was just a wake up call it was a us. wake up call that okay let's change it a little bit because he would want me to count down for him to go to the light and then count with him coming yeah. back so i stopped that i'm like no i'm not going to count with you going over there but i'll count really fast when right. you come back like kind of weeding it out instead of crossing my arms and yeah. saying all together no i'm yeah. not counting then you're just really you're just asking for yeah. you're just asking for trouble <laughs> you know <laughs> and you're not really giving in but hey if we if we gradually went into all these steps and let's gradually come out of mm-hmm. all of these steps. And I think that's wise for us. And that works best for Bryce. Again, mm-hmm. every child is different. Every family is different. But for us, that's what I find. If we And he's sneaky. I mean, he will add things in there and we don't even know that he's yes. adding them. Yep. But then you look back and you're like, holy cow, he added this, he added that, he added the airplane, he that added the bear, he added the, routine. like we used to have the flashlight, right? But we've weeded out the yeah, flashlight. He doesn't need the flashlight you for know, bed. It's he like, did ask for it last night. He too. asked and what, when I said, nope, you don't need a flashlight, was no there was not a peep. Yeah. So, you know, we're working on this, but it is a constant work in progress. Um, you know, I was going to share today because uh, as we're talking about behaviors, there was a story that somebody shared that I listened to that had a great impact for me and upon me. And so I'm going to share this because it may help somebody else. So (laughs) this was, I can tell you when it was Labor Day in 2018, because it was such a horrible, horrible weekend when we went away for a weekend. (laughs) And um, this was, I, I really do believe this was God's provision for me to let me hear this particular podcast that week before we went to the hotel, Mm -hmm. knowing what was lying ahead that I had no clue was lying ahead for me. But I was listening to this mom talk about uh, her son and his behaviors. 
And her son at that time was, I think she said around three and Bryce was four. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she said that he was doing like self injurious stuff. But to get her attention, he would bang his head on the floor. And Mm. I thank God that Bryce hasn't done anything violent like that. But she, it was scared her, Mm -hmm. you know? So just picture your child banging his head on the floor hard and it wasn't on the carpet. She said he'd go to the kitchen (laughs) where it was tile and more effective, Mm. you know, to get her reaction. So he would bang his head on the floor. And then of course she would comfort him, you know, and give Mm. him a cookie. So she had a new ABA therapist that came and she was explaining what was happening. And the the therapist is like, and what do you do after he bangs his head on the floor? She goes, oh, my gosh, I'm freaking out. I go and I pick him up. I'm like, are you OK? And I take him to our favorite rocking chair and I rock him and I console him. And I said, when he's calm, do you want a cookie? I'll get you a cookie. He goes, yeah, so that's how he gets a cookie. And that's how he gets you to comfort him. She's like, no way. And he's like. Just trust me on this. We're going to ignore this behavior. We're not going to ignore him, but we're going to ignore this behavior. It may take a long time and you're going to want to give in because it's going to be hard. It's going to be painful, but you cannot. I am here. I'm going to help you stay strong. She said, I I really didn't know what was going to happen. I was so nervous about it, but I wanted this to stop. So I said, okay, I'm in. So sure enough. Something triggered, and he went and he started banging his head on the floor. They didn't do anything. They ignored the behavior. So he's banging harder. And now he stopped banging his head, and then he came over to her, and now he's pulling on her leg. And he's screaming, 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 trying to get her attention. She's ignoring. They walk to another room. She keeps a conversation going with her ABA tech, (laughs) right? So that... He knows she's ignoring the behavior, Mm -hmm. but she can't address him yet because of his behavior, because he has done nothing inappropriate or nothing appropriate, Mm -hmm. I should say, for her to respond to. Only bad things, you know, banging and screaming and tugging and crying. She said it went on. They timed it. It was like 22 minutes. And then she said he stopped and he said, Mama, hold me. Mm-hmm. And he said in a normal tone. And then she looked at her tech like, can I do it? And he says, now you can respond. Yeah. And she did. And she said, after that, he never banged his head again. It's amazing. Unbelievable. So <clears throat> fast forward three days, you and I go <laughs> to the hotel. And I told you that story because I'm like, oh, my goodness. You're not going to believe what I heard today. And you got to remember, we were pretty fresh in this whole journey, and we were just starting to see behaviors from Bryce that we hadn't seen before. So we get to that hotel, and he was so obsessed with elevators and stairs, and he wanted to go either up the elevator or up the stairs, and we were trying to mix it up. You know, the whole idea of that weekend was so that we could have family time away and serenity. We even looked on the map and said, what are the most 10 most peaceful places in the state of Florida? Mm -hmm. And we picked one of those places because we were feeling like we were at our wits end. This is when you were in the depth of your depression. God just wanted to push us over the edge. Oh my word, you know? So it was (laughs) like, we were right there. And all this was happening. And we even took like a We had gotten from the ABA tech all these tests that we could do with him to kind of figure out where he was on the scale of his age group and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I don't know what the heck we were thinking. I think he had lost his ABA. uh, He was out of ABA at that time. So we were trying to fill in the gaps. Yeah. There we were. So anyway, so uh, I just remember the stairs. I remember the elevator. And then... I did figure out that, okay, there were games in the lobby, so I got a game, and I said, okay, you're going to play a game with me, you know, and we set a timer for 10 minutes, and then when we finish the game, then we can go do the stairs. So, kind okay, of like ABA 101, you do what I want you to do, and then I'll do what you want to do. You know, we were trading off, and I was so proud of that, and I'm like, yes, okay, I got this, and then... There was a sliding glass door because we got a patio with a view over the river. And he wanted to open and close the door. Open, open, close, open, close, open, close. And I don't know what happened. 
but there was something that I said to him, and I could not tell you what it was now because God blocked that out of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but there was something specific that I said to him that triggered a reaction that came straight from the pits below us. And so it came up and I was like, and it started just like what that lady had described where he was screaming and then tugging on my leg and crying and begging me to do whatever it was that he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Oh my word, I am in this. I I am in this and I, and I can't go back because if I do what he wants me to do, it game over. He right. wins That'll forever. Be, yes. You know, like in my head. Well, you couldn't handle it, which I don't blame you. And remember, <laughs> we weren't in a house. We were in a hotel room <laughs> with people next door hearing oh. all this going on. Thank God we were on one end. So we only had one neighbor. But anyway, so you left because, again, you're like, I can't. And I'm like, it's OK. I can't. You couldn't. And I don't I, blame I, you. I and it was at me yeah. that time. It was not at you. It right. was totally on me. It was on my leg. It was me that he wanted to do something. And uh, I remember just walking like (laughs) through the little living room area to the bed over to the bathroom. And I went in the bathroom while he's still just tugging on me and crying and I'm brushing my hair. I'm trying to do anything (laughs) that could just be like, I don't know. I'm just trying to ignore this behavior and praying. Help me, Lord, through this. It was... I think it was over 20 minutes, at least, of full on the same thing, him crying, begging. He was exhausted. I was exhausted. I was trying to avoid the place of where it happened because they always say remove yourself. But how far can you remove yourself when you're in a hotel? I mean, really, you're not taking this out into the hallway in the lobby. So I went and I laid down on the bed and he came and he laid down beside me. And he was calming, so I could sense that he was calming, which was great. And then finally, he asked me to do whatever it was that he wanted me to do. And it wasn't something bad. It was just something that the way he acts, the way he was asking me was bad. Okay, so he wasn't asking me to undo a behavior like he did with you. Whatever it was that he wanted that I had said no to, he asked me in a nice, calm voice. And when he asked me that way, I said, thank you for asking me in a nice way. Yes, I will do that for you, whatever it was. And I did it and it was fine. And then we went down in the lobby and you saw it had stopped. And you're like, how did you do it? I'm like, God's grace. (laughs) And we did it. I remember I walked out with him and the people in the room next to us happened to walk out at the same time. (laughs) And the look that man gave me. Honestly, I think he thought I was torturing Bryce and it was really sad. And you know what? I just didn't even have it in me to explain that day. It's okay. Um, Thank God they didn't go down to the lobby. Seriously, they could have called the police on us. I, you know, things happen, but Mm -hmm. God protected us. I'm very grateful because we were doing the right things. I do remember later that night when we laid down in the bed, he mentioned it one more time because we went back to the same place because obviously we couldn't avoid it. We almost left the hotel and I said, no, it's already paid for and we're staying, you know, Um, but we did. We saw it through and we were exhausted when we left, but that he, he did not do that again. In fact, until this past week, I can't remember another time where it was that long, that bad for that kind of behavior. So, you know, and that was a couple years ago. Thank God. I know there's people that deal with this all the time, but I feel like how we handled it that day made the difference. It really, really did. But I find now that some of this stuff is just escalating again. So, you know, I never, it's again, we say whack-a-mole all the time, but it's true. You get rid of one thing and then here comes another thing. But right now there's no doubt in our home that we are, in a period of time where we're just having to really ignore some behaviors that are escalating, but they always warn us they'll escalate before they go away. And so we are almost there. I mean, and this isn't going on all day, all night, but he does know when he's pushing buttons. I do think he knows that Mm -hmm. because he knows he's about to get what he's wanting. And, you know, he's got that personality like, so many of us, you know, when you want something, he's persistent, he's persistent. 
He's a little competitive. You know, I find that in games. Yeah. Like he wanted to well, win at lunch today. He wanted to finish his noodles before me. Yep. So he told you to stop eating. He told me to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm glad that he told me because that could have been something like if I finish my food first. Right. Not thinking that I'm in a competition over here. You that know, could have been a it could have been a trigger and yeah. a meltdown. Right. And we, we just would have don't have no know. idea why. But and since he told us, then. We so know I'm why. grateful that he pointed that out because he thought I was done because I was. And then I got a second helping. Thank God I did. So, you know, that gave yeah. him a chance to then go finish my his plate before mine. But it's those kind of things. And I do think, you know, that wiring is I got to I need you to do what I want you to do. And he doesn't want to stop until he gets it. Like you say, it's very persistent. But. We have to be, we have to win in this case. We have to be the ones that, oh, this goes against every fiber in my being to not say something to you, to not correct you for screaming, for not pointing out that this is not right. You know, I mean, those are the, we want to discipline him in a way that we're used to being disciplined when we were younger. Um, But you can't. You also have to point out that, um, these behaviors may happen at home and may not happen at other places. So, for instance, his OT behavior, his OT therapist, I asked one day, I was like, does he have any behaviors where he screams or has to do something over and over again or whatever? And she's like, no, nothing like that. So, you know, sometimes it's the behavior is just, with the parents, you know, I don't know, because well, we're around them so much. Or... I, I'm glad you mentioned that, because even last week, um, in last week's episode, when Christine was talking about the school that she has, mm-hmm. and she was saying how the parents describe their children one way, mm-hmm. but then when they're at the school, they behave a completely different way. Right. Well, I was thinking about that, and I think all children, I mean, if you talk to, and I'm at, in a general. That's true. Children behave, behave different around or, their parents yes. than they do at school, specifically. Good point. And you will hear that children will do well in school because it's an environment. Maybe it's because they don't feel like they can't get kicked out of school, but at home. They can't get kicked out of home, but they can get kicked out of school. I don't know. But you, or you just feel like, okay, I can keep it together while I'm at school. But when you come home, you're in your safe space Mm -hmm. and you let it all out, you know, and I think that in that way, that makes Bryce like many other children that he's going to test behaviors and he's going to test us in ways that he's not going to test somebody else intentionally or unintentionally. He's going to behave in ways here because he's in his home and his safe space. Then he's going to behave When he's at church or when he's at a therapy place, um, indoor or outdoor, you know, because he for him being homeschooled, he is still away from us and in other settings with adults throughout the week, all week. You know, I watch him when he has his music therapy and, you know, I leave them in there to do their thing. And he's very good with him as well. So, yeah, I I do think. You know, the way he is with us, he's not going to necessarily be that way with other people. He's not that way with um, any of the people that watch him, uh, that care for him while we're gone or where he's at any type of authority place, either like with therapists and also. So I'm very thankful to have babysitters and that we can get out and do other things and, you know, regain our sanity We need that. And that leads me to our game night last (laughs) night that we had with our neighbors. Do you remember the name of the game? Shoot. Like uh, Clue, True, Code code Name. Code Name. I do think that was it. Code Name. Yes. Good job. That was fun. And um, it's been a while since we've had a game night with anybody. So... It was really fun and a lot of laughter. And I think when you do have a sitter, you have to go out and laugh because you just need that different type of energy going yeah. to to get you through till you get a sitter again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes it sound so awful. It's not that bad. No. I mean, we laugh a lot here and we do. We play with Bryce a lot. 
but oh, we do. I understand exactly yeah. what you're saying. Well, it's, okay. So last night, for example, this we were playing across the street. So that's nice. We we are blessed with wonderful neighbors, and but we've never gone over and actually hung out with them. Mm-hmm. And all these without Bryce, I should say it that way. Without yeah. Bryce, okay. And they they have a son also, but he's older. He's 17. So. When you go to their house, it's very quiet. Yes. You know, and that's what you pointed out. And we knew that we had to be home by 830 last night. <laughs> and you're and like, oh, we'll, well just we're like in the him. middle of the game. And I could tell they want they didn't want to quit playing. So I'm like, well, we can go get Bryce. And you're like, no, no, we no. Are not you know, getting Bryce. and then you're like, hear the silence. And I'm like, it was kind of tangible. Like you could reach out and touch yes. it. It was so quiet. Because we were thinking uh, it's a thinking game. It so, was. Yeah. So it was. And we love that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was good. And I understood your point. Like, no, I don't want to bring Bryce over here and ruin. It, it's this. not so, that it would ruin it. Well, it, it would, would change just, it. it would, we well, wouldn't it be able of, to play the game. Well, so it would ruin the game. <laughs> it would ruin I'm the gonna game. I'm going to call it what it is. Listen, it would have ruined the game. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because he would have been asking us lots of questions or read that sentence, read that sentence, you know. And while we want to do that here, we also have to have mommy, daddy take a break time. And, you know, it made me think about, you know, the BC or no, it was a BB before Bryce days, you know, when we would go and do that kind of stuff. And we're just now getting to a point that we have a sitter where we can go out. But we're learning how to date again and we're learning how to mm-hmm. what can we do and it's and so important finding other people that we can do stuff with that mm-hmm. we enjoy their company and they're available and they're not too busy, quote it's, unquote. It's not that we don't enjoy Bryce's company at all. It's just that you know people know it's just it builds up all the behaviors it just builds up, builds up, builds up and you just need a break. Well, you know, yeah. you just need a break. And, you know, we love them, you know, as much or more than any other parent could love their kid. It's just, it's the PTSD, you know. Well, and in your case, I mean, you're homeschooling him. So yeah, I'm with him you're all the time. with him even more. Yeah. And yes, you do have your breaks where you take him to the the house, you know, for yeah. where he calls it for the mm-hmm. therapy, which does give you a couple hours, and that's great. But it's not a situation where he's in a school from nine a.m. to three p.m. Mm-hmm. that you have, you know, six hours a day times five, you know, that's right. thirty hours a week right. or whatever. It's not that situation, and I am away in my own stress pot called work, you know. Yeah. But it's different than here, yeah. and. I understand, you know, that you're ready for some type of break. So you've been getting breaks on Saturday mornings. I'm like, whatever you want to do, it's my time with Bryce. And I love my time Mm -hmm. with Bryce. And I've enjoyed that. And, you know, you're like, well, I may join you. And I'm like, if you want to, that's fine. But if not, seriously, take it. I don't even get that because honestly, my time away from here is at work. And you know what? I think that he generally he is fantastic during the day when i'm homeschooling him uh when he's doing other therapies he's he's great i think it things get magnified when you come home from work and he wants all of a sudden he wants more of our attention i don't know if it's because we're trying to spend time together and he wants i think that's part of one of us or both of us or whatever but it just seems like behaviors heighten, tension heightens, because we're trying to relax because it's the end of the day. We're trying to unwind, maybe watch a TV show. And then he is trying to do something else, you know. He, uh, yeah, I, I'm hearing you. you I know think what part I'm of, yeah, I do. I do. I think when I come home at first, you and I are trying to just have a conversation we're to catch up to catch on how up the on day was. Day. Okay, yeah. so we're not trying to relax as much as we're trying to catch up. So you're wanting my undivided mm-hmm. attention. Bryce is wanting my attention because I also just got home for him. Mm-hmm. So it's like you both are competing <laughs> for my attention. And that's really yeah. part of it, you know, but you win because you came first. And, yeah. you know, we say to him now, 
you know, of course I greet him. But then we'll say, if we really need to talk, then I'll be right. like, okay, we're going to go in the office and we can, mommy and dad are going to talk and we're going to set a timer and we're going to talk for 15 minutes and then we'll be out and then I'll play mm-hmm. with you and he'll know what I'm going to do because he's wanting to play Uno or he's wanting, which is fabulous. I'm mm-hmm. so excited that now he now acknowledges me when I come home because quite honestly, it wasn't until recently that he even acknowledged me when I came in the door. Mm-hmm. So it's now a competition of mommy's home. And usually <laughs> there's something that you have said to him that he can't do until I come home. Because as soon as I come home, there's something that he's so excited to see me because now he gets That's to do hilarious. fill in the blank. And I'll be like, oh, did daddy tell you that you get to do that when I come home? Yeah, right. So that's what I get greeted that's with. Funny. But that, you know, that's, that's kind of it. So yeah. I think, yes, that's it. And like you said, we at eight o'clock, we try to wind everything down, kind of try to watch a show. He might be coming back in here. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, he needs help. So uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So Bryce needed a little help with laundry. I will say that his love for laundry has returned and it's. It's been a good thing. Yeah. In a, in a good um, way. Yeah, he's picked up some old interests. Yeah, I think we had mentioned before, he used to just sit and watch it happen a couple years ago. But now he wants to know what all the buttons mean. And um, he enjoys completing the wash cycle and then moving it over to the dryer. And he, he's got so many great skills that he's really picked up and you know ABA has been good for that as well because we were talking about ABA today and I just want to point out some of the positive things too is like they're helping him at this age to get dressed Um, they've helped him learn how to master doing his buttons on his shirts and he likes to snap his jeans and put his socks on and um, you know so many positive things and we just had asked for uh, an assessment review just for our knowledge like how well has he done, you know, in the past four months since I started working with him again? And he's really, um, as they call it, mastering, but he really is progressing in lots yeah. of positive ways. I'd say out of 10 areas, maybe he's still struggling in two. Yeah, and I think the main things he's struggling in is what we had asked them to add to the plan, which has to do with his social interactions is a mm-hmm. lot of it. Um, he is doing much better in learning to share and to take turns and, um, you know, manage his competitive drive, <laughs> which he may have gotten from me. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's it's a good it's so many good things has come out of this. We did talk to a friend the other night, um, one of his other buddies who's on the spectrum. We go bowling with and we talked to his mom and she had said that he graduated from ABA. And I'm like, can you do that? I didn't even know you could really do that. But she said yes, and then you confirmed with his BCBA, with yeah, Bryce's BCBA I asked her that it while can. she was going over the um, results of his assessment with me, I said, hey, I, I've heard that you can graduate from ABA. How, how does that work? And she's like, well, it is possible. She says that's when you've mastered all of your goals and that, the behaviors uh, that you've been working on do not reoccur for at least three months. So if you have you don't have any negative repeating behaviors for three months and you've reached all of your other goals, then it's considered he's done with ABA. And she says that's not to say that you can't come back later because you can if something else pops up. Um, you can get back into the program and, and to help you deal with whatever is going on. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Yeah. But hey, hey. we'll keep working. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got quite a ways to go based on today's discussion, yes. but that's okay. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> there is. We'll just see how close we get to it. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for talking about this today with me. Mm-hmm. You know, I do think that this podcast is, is really just to help people. Again, we say it, we're here to share our journey. It's about us. We're not trying to say that we know about anybody else's situation, which is why I'm hesitant to say they or our kids. Mm -hmm. They're not our kids. We have one child that we work with that we know a lot of you relate to that listen only because you've told us. Um, But, you know, we hope that 
people find something helpful out of this that we share, like, oh, I didn't realize that they were playing me, or I didn't realize that once it Here starts, it I got to stick through. He may be coming back. Um, but anyway, it's been good. I hope that people get something out of this today. I think it's always good for you and I to share. Um, yeah. Because honestly, we don't always get to sit and talk like this and you know, Bryce is really cool today, actually. Mm-hmm. He was good about letting us stay <laughs> in here and do the podcast. Of course, we hooked him up with laundry and, yeah. and a new game. But, you know, those are the kind of things that we just have to create this time to do it and to share. And um, if this is your first time finding us, I want to just say thank you um, for sticking it through and listening to us. And we hope that uh, you'll continue to follow us and maybe go back and catch some back episodes if you're one of those that have been following this journey with us, we we really, really thank you. We appreciate it. And it just encourages us to keep doing this um, because we really do feel this calling and we're hoping that we can just share more with you. Okay, Bryce, can we finish up and tell them your Bible verse? Come here. We're going to leave and you can wrap up for the people today. Okay. The Lord will keep me safe he will keep me from getting stuck Proverbs 3 26 excellent job (laughs) okay anything else you want to say (laughs) no words today okay I I like real mommy receptions okay we're all done have a great week and thanks for tuning in (laughs) bye 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 people